Have you ever heard of the mysterious ancient rubber people? Most haven't. They lived thousands of years ago, after all. But for an ancient culture, they were very advanced. They built massive cities, sculptures, and pyramids. They used astronomy, math, and chemistry. They even invented one of the greatest sports of all time. Their legacy has lived on for thousands of years in the cultures that followed them, and yet, we don't even know their real name. In modern times, they are known simply as the Olmecs. Our world is shaped by the past. Customs, cultures, and knowledge are all built upon a foundation laid by those who came before. We stand on the shoulders of our ancestors. A great example of this is the history of Mesoamerica. Mesoamerica is a region of the world spanning from modern-day Mexico down into Central America. This area was the home of many diverse and interesting civilizations throughout history, including the Aztecs, Toltecs, and Mayans. And although each one of these was unique, they were all influenced by the knowledge and customs of the Olmecs who came before them. The Olmecs lived in the well-watered lowlands of southern Mexico on the coast of the Gulf of Mexico. This area is swampy, hilly, and has volcanoes nearby. The rivers that flow down from the mountains provide a silty soil that made farming easier. As the population grew, this area became a cradle of civilization. The Olmecs started building cities around 1200 BCE, starting with a great city we now call San Lorenzo located on the Coatzacoalcos River. Where the Olmecs came from before that is somewhat of a mystery. They wrote using a form of hieroglyphics, but these just don't tell the whole story. In fact, we don't even know what they called themselves. The word Olmec comes from an Aztec word that was used to describe the ancient Olmecs over a thousand years after they were gone. The word Olmec means rubber people, or people of the rubber country. Rubber people? Well, they weren't made of rubber, obviously, but they did make rubber. Native to this region was a plant that we call the rubber tree. The Olmecs would cut a strip of the rubber tree and let the liquid inside drip out and collect it. This liquid is called latex. They would then mix that latex with juice from a morning glory vine in just the right way to make it form rubber. This was some very early chemical engineering. Rubber is used today for several important things, but the Olmecs shaped it and hardened it to make something special to them. Bouncy balls! They made these rubber bouncy balls in all different sizes, some even 22 centimeters or 10 inches in diameter. That's almost the size of a soccer ball. These larger rubber balls were used in a very important ball game that was played anciently. Today, this is referred to simply as the Mesoamerican ball game. We don't know the exact rules of the game, but it's believed that the ball was bounced back and forth between two teams using mostly the hips, no hands or heads allowed. In ancient ruins in Mesoamerica, we can find long, narrow ball courts that were built with stone walls, probably used to bounce the ball against the walls as they played back and forth. Some of these courts even have a sideways ring way up high on the wall to pass the ball through, possibly. We just don't know for sure what the rules were. But one thing we do know is that the ball game itself continued for thousands of years with evidence that it was played by the Olmecs, the Mayans, and the Aztecs. The game was more than just for fun, it was clearly an important part of their cultural and religious observance. It may have been used to resolve conflicts and avoid war, perhaps between two warring tribes. Some people in modern Mesoamerica play a version of the ball game today for fun and to honor their ancestors. It's now called Paktapak. Rubber wasn't the only crop they grew in Olmec society. They grew beans, squash, and a type of grain called amaranth. The most important crop of all, though, was maize, which is similar to corn. The ancient Mesoamericans had to cultivate and propagate the maize, then soak it in lime water, then rinse and hull it to make it easier to cook and to improve its nutrition. This whole process is called nixtamalization, and without preparing the maize this way, it may have been impossible to sustain and feed such a large, thriving population of people. This same process was passed down to other Mesoamerican cultures throughout time to make porridge and tortillas. There is even evidence that the Olmecs used maize kernels to make the world's first popcorn. 
Another important plant for the Olmecs was the cow cow tree. This tree is native to Mesoamerica, and the Olmecs discovered a process to use the beans to make chocolate. They used chocolate to make a drink. We think this may have been part of their religious rituals, but we aren't sure. So next time you have some popcorn or hot chocolate, remember to thank the ancient Olmecs for discovering some of our favorite treats. The Olmec religion clearly involved more than a ball game and hot chocolate, but as a whole, it is still mostly a mystery to historians. The Olmecs had many gods, but we don't know their names. Researchers refer to them by a number. Their gods are closely associated with parts of nature, such as animals, rain, or crops like maize. Many of these gods are similar to those found in Mayan and Aztec religion later in history, such as the Olmec snake god, which is perhaps represented later as Kukulkan for the Maya and Quetzalcoatl for the Aztecs. The Olmecs built on a large scale too. They planned their cities and built them using bilateral symmetry and oriented them along a north-south axis. This shows that they probably invented a compass of some sort. They built huge temples and pyramids in their cities. One such is called the Great Pyramid, located in the ancient city of La Venta. It was 110 feet or 34 meters tall. Now that's only one quarter the height of the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt, but it's still very tall for an ancient culture. The Olmecs are also famous for carving giant head sculptures from basalt. These huge heads are around three meters tall, almost 10 feet. Each one weighs around 8 tons. 17 of these heads have been discovered, 10 of which were found in the ancient city of San Lorenzo. They are thought to be representations of powerful Olmec rulers, but we aren't totally sure. One of the biggest mysteries of all is where the Olmecs went. The Olmec civilization seems to disappear around 400 BCE. Many theories have been proposed. Perhaps there was a change in climate that made farming in the area unsustainable for a time. Some think that a large volcanic eruption could have made it impossible to stay. Still others think war may have led to their disappearance. We aren't sure yet. What we do know is that their culture and technology lived on. The Zapotecs, Mayans, and Aztecs all learned and adapted Olmec farming, culture, religion, and even the ball game to their own civilizations. They were influenced by the people of the past, and they in turn influenced future cultures and people after interacting with Europeans later on. There's so much more about the Olmecs than we could fit into this short video. If you're curious, check out the links below to find more information about the Olmecs and links to pictures of Mesoamerican ruins and artifacts. Thank you so much for watching to the end. It helps us out so much. We hope you enjoy learning with us. If you do, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, please share our videos with other teachers and students on social media. This helps us continue to grow and make more fun videos for you and your students. See you next time!